Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be studying about anatomy of the pulp cavity. So why to study anatomy of pulp? Does it look same in all the individuals? The pulp cavity does not look the same in all persons. However, these variations follow a general pattern, hence studying this would be wise enough. Pulp is the central cavity within the tooth and is surrounded by dentine from all over except at the pipal foramen. A pical foramen is a space at the root apex from where the blood vessels and the nerves enter the tooth and keep it alive. Pulp cavity has two parts, pulp chamber and root canal. Pulp chamber is the coronal portion while the root canal is the radicular portion. So is there a line of division between the coronal and the radicular portion? I would say yes and no. Yes for multi-rooted teeth and no for the anterior teeth. Imagine the pulp chamber as a cube. This is the roof of the pulp chamber and this is the floor. But unlike the roof of your house, this roof extends from the corners into under the cusps and these are called as the pulp horns. The floor has openings called the canal orifices that leads into the root canals. And these are the walls and we name it according to the corresponding tooth surface. Example, if this is the lingual surface of tooth, this would be the lingual wall of the pulp chamber. Naming the angles of the pulp is easy too. Just join the name of the walls that form the angle and you are done. Example, distobuckle angle of the pulp chamber. Root canal is that portion that extends from the canal orifice to the apical foramen. We divide it into three parts for our convenience. Coronal, middle and apical third. Accessory canals are the extra canals found sometimes apart from the main canal, also called lateral canals. However, to be specific, lateral canal is an accessory canal that extends to the lateral surface of the root. Is the canal straight? I wish they were. Straight canal is in fact uncommon. You'll either find a constriction just before the apex or you will find a curvature. Do we have as many canals as the number of roots? Again, I wish it was the case. In most cases, we do have the number of canals same as the number of roots, but the exceptions are there. Like, mesial root of the mandibular first molar almost always has two canals. Even the distal root in this occasionally has two canals. So we can say the mandibular first molar is kind of buy one get one free. Mesobuccal root of maxillary first molar frequently has two canals. And pulp cavity in the mandibular anteriors or even premolar tooth may present two separate canals. So it's not that we have as many canals always as the number of roots. This may vary. Now these variations have been classified. Two main classifications are Venus classification and Vertusis classification. We would call it the Venus 4 classification and Vertusis 8 classification because Veni gave 4 times and Vertusis gave just the double, that is 8. Let's study the Venus classification. Type 1, single canal. Type 2, we have 2 canals that join to form 1. Type 3, we have 2 separate canals and type 4, we have one canal which bifurcates and form two canals. Now the word 2C is classification. One canal, we have two canals that join to form one. Then we have one canal which bifurcates to form two and then once again joins to form one. This is one to one. And then we have two separate canals. Then we have one canal which bifurcates to form two. Then we have two canals which joins to form one and then once again bifurcates to form two. And then we have one canal which bifurcates to form two canals and then once again join to form one canal and then once again bifurcates to form two canals. I wonder what will happen if we encounter such a canal in clinical life. And then we have three separate canals. Let's study a little more about the pical foramen. In young, incompletely developed teeth, the pical foramen is funnel shape, means it has a wider portion which extends outward. The mouth of the funnel is filled with periodontal tissue that is later replaced by dentine and cementum. So as the root develops, the pical foramen becomes narrower. Okay, and the inner surface of the root apex become lined with cementum which may even extend for a short distance that is around 1 mm or so into the root canal. 
So the cemento dentinal junction, which is the CDI, therefore does not necessarily occur at the extreme end of the root, but may occur within the main root canal. That is 0.5 to 1 mm within the main canal. That is why when we do cleaning and shaping, we just end at the cemento dentinal junction. That is, we end 0.5 to 1 mm before reaching the apex. So that is why we keep the working length. 0.5 to 1 mm less than the actual length. Now let's proceed to the SS opening. So we learn about the maxillary central incisor by comparing it with the lateral incisor so that we can learn about both of them. So the length of the central incisor is 22.8 mm and the length of the lateral incisor is 22.5 mm. The pulp chamber, the shapes of both the lateral and the central incisor is similar. It's just that the lateral one is little smaller. The differences to note here is the pulp chamber or the LI, that is the lateral incisor, is smaller. The central incisor has three pulp horn, which corresponds to the mammalons. And the lateral incisor has two pulp horn, which corresponds to the mammalons as well. Now the root canal. Both the central incisor and the lateral incisor are broad labiopalatally. Also, the canal in both of them is conical in shape. In cross section, we divide it into three parts, the cervical third, the middle third and the pical third. In the cervical third, the central incisor is ovoid mesodistally, while the lateral is ovoid labiopalatally. In the middle third, the central incisor is ovoid to round and the lateral incisor is ovoid. And the pical third, both the central incisor and the lateral incisor are round. So this was about the cross section. Now let's see how actually we do the SS opening. We first take a radiograph of the concerned tooth. This will tell us the size, shape and the extension of the pulp. Okay. Then we use a number four round burr at a high speed and the enamel is penetrated in the center of the lingual surface at an angle perpendicular to it. So we will take our round burr. We will penetrate the center of the lingual surface okay at an angle perpendicular to the tooth after penetration of enamel the burr is directed towards the long axis of the tooth this way then we'll proceed downward when the chamber is large enough a drop is felt so this can be thought of as a person walking and suddenly falling into a gutter <laughs> we call it a drop effect and it means that we have reached the pulp chamber so it tells us that the pulp has reached then we remove the overhanging enamel and dentine of the lingual roof of the pulp chamber including the pulp horn by the same number 4 round burr but with a slow speed now. First we were using high speed, now we are using slow speed. Remember we do this from working from inside to outside. This way we get a straight line excess means we get a smooth entry into the canal. Now what we have to do, we have to enlarge the entrance. This is done by removing the lingual shoulder. For this, we use the Gates Glidden Drill of appropriate size, usually number 4. And here also, we work from inside out with light strokes. A question which might come into your mind is what is a lingual shoulder? When you remove the lingual roof, a prominence of dentine is created and that is called the lingual shoulder. So by removing the lingual roof and the lingual shoulder, we get a direct access, a direct entry to the apex of the root. And that's what we want. This is verified by placing the straight end of the explorer into the canal opening. In the maxillary central incisor, the SS shape we get is slightly triangular and with the base of the triangle towards the incisal edge. Now the SS opening of the maxillary lateral incisor is similar to the central incisor except that it is smaller and usually more ovoid. And here we use number 2 round burr instead of 4. So I hope this video was helpful. If you like the video, please don't forget to share the video, comment and subscribe and help us grow. See you soon. Love is.